<laughs> Welcome everyone to another episode of Live with Sandra V. Now, if I am meeting you for the first time, my name is Sandra Van Sickle, and it's always my goal to educate, inspire, and promote other people within the industry who share my same vision. And my special guest tonight, she is a friend and a fellow uh, workroom owner. Mm -hmm. uh, and Julia Hash is here with me tonight um, because she, as you all know, are going to share. She's going to share her uh, Roman blackout Roman shade method with all of you. All right, so I want everyone to um, help me welcome her by giving her some thumbs up and some hearts or whatever it takes. And also, please share this out so that other people can join in. I don't know how many times we uh, do the show and people miss it and they say, oh, I miss it. But if we can get it uh, out there and they can join in. <clears throat> Hopefully, Facebook will do their job and notify them. Okay. Now, Julia is a... Uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself. I want to say your wholesale workroom, but I don't know that you are. Um, I'm the owner of JSH Designs here in Raleigh. We do wholesale, primarily wholesale, but some retail work. I've been in business for over 20 years, and um, we do have a, I have a separate studio space outside of my home, which I've been in about four years now. And um, I love what I do, and I have a fantastic staff and a team that really helps make me look good. So um, I love that. And um, this is, I'm excited to share this. It's, I'd like to say I'm revolutionizing the industry, but it's just another method, so another way to do something. Well, and let me just say that Julia was over here probably about a month ago and we were having lunch and we were um, talking about another, actually another um, project that she's working mm -hmm. on um, and the other project happens to be for the workroom central for the IWC next year and if you guys stay tuned uh, we'll talk more about this at the very end because uh, it's exciting and she's going to be teaching and can't wait but anyway that was just a little side note there <laughs> but um, so we, we're working away and talking and all of a sudden she's just sitting there by this you know the desk and she says oh Sandra she says I've been working on this you know blackout method for Roman shades and I said oh that's great you know and I thought oh I wonder if she's going to share it and you said that you were you know still trying to perfect it so I was really excited and I was very thankful that you have decided to share it with me and everybody else thank um, you for so, having me yeah mm -hmm. it's great mm -hmm. I appreciate you being here so anyway we are um, gonna, I'm going to turn it over to Julia in just a second okay Okay, and um, but let's say hello to everybody, and let's just say too that during the evening, if you have questions, go ahead and type them in, and she'll stop um, and answer them. We have Veronica Van Gelder over here. Uh, I think most of you know her. Just give a shout out below. I can't turn the camera hey, on. Everybody. Right. <laughs> so she'll be filtering the questions, and she'll be able able to answer a couple of things. One thing I I, I like to mention before yes. we get started mm -hmm. is that um, Julie's going to show you her shade in just a few minutes, but um, she has used the Coley system, and we're going to try to stay on track with um, her blackout method tonight. Uh, but I have asked um, Jill Reagan Scully as well as um, Nicole Nomer to uh, drop in the links uh, for the Coley system. Um, Nicole couldn't make it, but I did drop in her number. If you live close to her or whatever, you want to reach out to her. Um, and then Jill is here tonight to answer some of the Coley's questions um, if you have that. Okay, so that would be so much easier and uh, we can stay focused on the blackout method. Sounds great. Okay, that sounds, sounds, sounds good. So, all right, um, but like I said, you know, you talking about revolution, revolutionizing the, the, <laughs> uh, I yeah. can say, uh, the industry on it. No, no matter what we do here with blackout, we always have to do an extra step mm -hmm. or take that in order to eliminate those pinholes of light. Correct. So I've taken a look at your system, and I, I love it, and I think you all are going to. So okay. Thanks. Okay. Can we say hello to everyone? Who do we have out there? Well, 
I don't know because I'm not seeing the comments. Okay. <laughs> so I can, I, I'll tell you, I, 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 I will actually tell you all that, you know, I've complained so many times that I can't see the comments, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the, this program is updated and I can see everyone. So I want to say hello to Cheryl, um, you know, great to have you here and then Jill Reagan Scully is here. Thank you for being here and, and help filtering those questions about Colise. Um, Joanne Weeperdink, hello. Uh, Laisha, good to see you. And Sylvia, it's great to have you here. And Donna uh, Johnson and Janice, I don't know if we had you on this show before, but welcome. And Ann, hi Ann, saw her at the um, Kim's meetup. We had a good time with her. Margaret Moore and Barbara Roth and Karen Smith. Hi, Karen. It's, it's great to see everybody. Mm -hmm. And Jody and uh, Sook, I hope I pronounced your name right, Kathy Tucker and Jane Frazier. So welcome everyone. Again, share this out. So, all right. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> so, you're going to go over? <clears throat> I'm going to go over and show, so the, show the shade. Okay. And... See. Um, there you go. Just... I just wanted to show that it looks like traditional traditional Roman shade from the front, um, and we turn it around. I'm a fan of it looking like a traditional Roman shade, where all you see are the rings, the ring locks. It's right. You don't you don't see anything extraneous on the outside. It just looks like we're used what we're used to seeing, what I'm familiar with you know, back in the good old days. <laughs> um, this is a coolie system, and I'm not sure if I'll pronounce it correct, but I really like it. It's got a nice um, kind of a pump action. It's a shame we don't have any light behind here, so you can see that there's there's no pinholes coming through. We didn't think about that. We didn't think about that. <laughs> um, but, but it's a nice, clean system on the back. Very nice, it's very system. nice look. Yeah, yeah very nice. And um, I really like this this double pull. I'm, I'm happy with that. So, um, but this it just kind of shows you traditional the traditional shape. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started with the um, the method, and I'll head on over there. I'm going to put on my old ancient tool belt, but it will help me keep focused. <laughs> it's a little dirty. Okay. The way I have done this is I've I cut my face fabric. I've kind of got started here. I've cut my face fabric. I cut it three and a half inches wider than the finished size of the shape. <clears throat> And then I'm going to cut it approximately 20 inches longer. It just gives me room for hems, and I like a, a permanent fold, um, and just kind of gives me some wiggle room if I have the fabric to work with. So I cut the fabric three and a half inches wider. Um, we'll be doing a, a single one and a half on either side, but we do lose some with the fold. Um, I cut the black out. Oh, and I just wanted to, to tell you what I'm using. I am using the Bella Note Duet, which has the black out and the fleece that's already attached. You can use regular inner lining and black out. It's, it's up to you. I use this as just to save a step. Um, I cut the black out a half an inch smaller than the face fa fabric, so when I fold in, you don't have to go back and cut out, you know, it's not over. It kind of meets because of all the, the fabric turn. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to oh, here it is. And I am not going to be super precise tonight just because just because we are um, it's just more of a method than it is being completely perfect. Fold in inch and a half on the side. I will 
come in. I use these um, clips. Helps me hold the black out without having to um, put pens. And just for such for tonight, um, sorry, I'm going to just trim off this so that we can work with it a little easier. I love those little clips. Do you really like using those? Those are awesome. I do like. I mean, I, we use them a lot with blackout because you know the moment you put a pin in it. True you're going to have a hole. Yep. And so the whole process, the whole, the whole thing is to try to keep the holes out. Yep. Um, so then what we're going to do, apologize for keep turning around. I'm not, don't have my, all my stuff in order. Yeah. Um, is then I'm going to come in and I'm going to fold in another inch and a half or to whatever your finish width needs to be. Sometimes it can be a little off once you're folding, okay. but you won't be able to tell. That. that would be awesome. <laughs> I'll just get away for a minute. What? Okay. I'll put this off here. Here, come on. here, help you. We just eyeballing it. I am, I am just eyeballing it right now. Just for uh, demonstration purposes. Do, Do you want me to clip? Yes, please. Thank you. Show everybody that. Let's turn that over. And, uh, Can you see that? Yeah, here. We'll do the, um, lay it down and I'll do the overhead and you'll see it. Okay. They're wonder clips. Yeah. I think Rolly sells them. Um, yeah. You can get them online, other places as cool. well. And uh, they have, they have, um, measurements on the back too. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That you can do if you want a half inch or... I think so. Okay. I, I have little ones. I've never used the larger ones mm -hmm. before, and I know a lot of quilters use them. Right. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I always feel like if I'm in front of the camera that but I'm not. I'm not side of you. Oh, that's true. Yeah, good. Okay. okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to fold, fold up. My bottom hem, I fold up three inches, and as we mentioned before, I'm not, this is not um, completely, of course I'm stuck now, there we go. Let no, me know, I need to help you. I no, you're fine, you're fine. See, I don't that, so okay. I'm just going to press that in. <coughs> Now, of course, when you're doing this for real, you're going to need to make sure that it's square and that everything is, is precise. If not, your shade's not going to look right. <laughs> okay. So what I do is go in and just roll that in. Everyone's loving your, uh, your little clips there. Oh, good. And you said that lining is Bella Note, right? Bella Note, the duet, oh. the um, that has the inner lining, the fleece already attached, it he um fused right to the blackout. Okay. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm cutting out this extra blackout at the bottom after I folded in my my hem. Can you see that, Sandra? I'm gonna pull this over just a tad, okay, so they can see that. I don't know that it's okay. Okay, go ahead. All right. There we go. Okay, is that Perfect. better, everyone? So you can see what she's doing at the bottom hemline. This way takes out some of the bulk that's unnecessary, but you don't want to cut um, right to the to the hemline because you run the risk of um, your blackout having a line, having a white line, a, a light line at the bottom if it happens to move. So. Then we're going to go on the 
this side. There we go. I kind of like being the camera person. Can you come do this all the time? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> bringing me out of uh, out of retirement <laughs> I'm glad to do it I'm, I uh, have missed it I have missed your shows and so anyway you're not going to go perfect there but just enough to put it in so I'll show you when we get that point okay so after I've gotten it all set out, I am ready to mark my lines where I'm going to um, draw my lines for where my tacks are going to be. Okay. And I know I have a pencil in here somewhere. Um, look, do you need a purple pen? A uh, purple pen will do. Actually, a pencil will be just fine. Could you hand me one back now? I think I have one. You can use pencil because you won't be able to see through it. Gotcha. I mean, you, won't, you can mark on here, and you're not going to be able. You won't see it through the uh, through the um, the back lining. Okay. So at this point, you're going to mark your lines, whatever your standard is. Um, I typically do up five and a half inches, so I can have a permanent fold, and then I start marking up from eight inches up eight inch increments um but if you're trying to match the pattern of course standards you can't go more than eight but you could do six or whatever your your spacing you would like to use would be so i'm going to come in and mark mine mark, mark my first one at five and a half And I love my clips, but they do get in the way a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to five and a half inches up, square to the bottom. I'm going to draw a line. <laughs> yeah, Am I not in the way? Am I in no, the way? No, no, no. Okay. Jody, we, we, we love your... We were discussing that. Yep, yep, yep. I'm working, on, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. Stay tuned. Uh, okay, so... From this point, I'm going to do eight. And my ruler is eight inches. So all I have to do is... And you're just drawing right and on I am just okay. drawing right on the blackout and that's what you would normally do it's not just for demonstration purposes right right, right. that's okay. that's what I normally would do okay. um, yeah it's not just to show you it's this is how we would do it and since it's demonstration purposes I may not do I probably will not do more than just a few rows just yeah. just to show you yeah. okay now just hold these down a little bit I'm going to come back in and I am going to um, Use whatever headrail system you're using for um, would determine your first set of your first row. Uh, I'm going to do a two and a half inch inset, and um, so what I'm going to do is mark two and a half inches from the edge. Mark it there. my initial points 
and then measure the difference. And then I'm only going to do three just for demonstration purposes. So it's 19. I'm going to divide that by two, which is eight and a half. Don't make me do math. Okay, I guess eight and a half. Nine and not, thank you. See, that's why I don't do math. <laughs> um, nine and a half. Now, you usually keep your rings somewhere between the 10 mark. Um, I do, correct. I do do that. This is not, I would um, would not, I don't go usually bigger than 10. Yeah, gotcha. So you wouldn't need another row anyway on this particular Probably row. not. Probably <laughs> not. Just double checking that. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to mark um, the two and a half. Just so I have a registration up here, and then my nine and a half. <laughs> Tanya, that's coming. <laughs> she wants to know where she can get the ruler. Oh yeah. Um, I actually had these made a few years ago for me, and um, working on some other things, ladies. Hopefully that will be coming soon. So I'm just going to, you know, connect the dots, basically. So I have my vertical and my horizontal lines. This is great because you don't, again, normally we would put straight, pin, well, I would put pins in, you know, mm -hmm. to mark it. Yes, to mark really it. Yeah. Absolutely, we would too. I mean, that's that would be our normal mm -hmm. procedure. But it keeps it from that's the whole point. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to tack um, at the intersection points that I've just drawn. So you just go all the way through to the face, pick up the, the blackout and the, and the face. I do not off the bottom. You don't probably have to, but I'll, I usually do it twice. And then come up to the next intersection. You don't need to cut your, your um, threads. But I will give it a little bit of ease, a little bit of have a tiny bit loose just so that it doesn't pull on itself. And sometimes I'll even go through another time just to make sure. And the good thing is that you can at this point match your thread to Correct. the fabric. Yeah. Correct. And they, it really, it's very helpful because you don't have to worry about, I mean, it, it's going to match and you, because you will not see this mm -hmm. when we're done. Mary Beth wants to know, what is your favorite thread to use? Um... I use a, a spun poly, but um, I it varies. I purchase uh, my threads either from Rolly or Waywack. Um, if it's a cream or a white, I like the Coats um, uh, carpet thread, the thicker thread, or um, Penny Bruce's... Um, I wish I knew the name of it. Sandra, do you know the name? It's the... Um, Selmite. Selmite? No, no. No, it's... Um, I, I can't remember. I apologize. I can't remember. But I can't remember either. I, I don't know. Does anybody well, that was, know? Now, that was a question I wasn't expecting. And if, sir, you're, you're using double thread right now. Right? I am using double thread, correct. I'm just trying to get as, uh, as good a... Um, as 
nice and tack as possible so that I know it's not going to come up, you know, there's not going to be any question of um, coming out. You went through it twice? I, I yeah, okay. double. Mm -hmm. I mean, you went through it once. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm watching the comments and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. I usually, you can do, I definitely would go through at least twice. Okay. If you want it extra secure, go through another time. <coughs> so, do you like going through it <coughs> twice or would you ever, like, double up in your thread you could, until once? If you want. I prefer, I like knowing it's, it's, there's a, there's, it's been gone through, I, mm -hmm. that it's a knot yes. more than it is. Because I, I often will just, like, have, like, maybe six strands of thread mm -hmm. and go through it once. Just one time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think but that's I like, a, you know, I think it's kind it of a, off though too as you stitch and then you go the next stitch, you're doing it twice and it kind of it kind of knots itself, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think it's a personal worry. preference. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. Sandra, somebody coming, it's blurry. Um, is it blurry? Okay. Um, put your hand up. Yep. Is, is that, that better? Good? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know. We just all. What happens is if we've got the, the white, it, sometimes it, um, it does, the camera does its thing with white background and the movement. So, I think it's better. Any other questions? Um, just stitching away here. Oh, uh, okay. Um, well, the name of that thread, I guess, that from Penny is Terco Satin Thread. Mm. Okay. If you're, we wait. I do know that um, I I did purchase it from um, Janelle, which is. Um, Workroom channel. Yes, the work through the workroom channel. Okay. Which you can purchase. Yes. Okay. Good. As you're doing that, I'm just gonna sure Go tell ahead. everyone. Please. Uh, thank you for being here tonight, and we have Angie here, and we've said hello to Janice and Cheryl, and let me see if I can move. Um, needle size. They want to know what needle size. Um, I am using, hold on, whatever she found in Sandra's Whatever closet. I found in Sandra's closet. <laughs> yeah. I use, I use a thinner needle for the, the, um, going through the face. Um, I, it's, I think what, which ones do you have, Sandra, that I have, yeah. I got out of your cabinet. Uh, you are looking like, it looks like to me you're using the John James That's, number five or seven. I was, it was a John James. I knew that, but I was like, oh, what number is it? I am not positive. Yeah. And again, the lining is the Bella Note what? Duet. Duet. Bella Note Duet. I purchased it through Angels. Okay. It keeps getting blurry. Okay. Yeah, I switched a little bit. I switched a bit. It, uh, it's just because we have a white, the lining is warm. Mm -hmm. So, sorry folks, it's the white lining. I'm it's, sorry. It's all right. And to, um, so you cut your face fabric 20 inches longer than your mm -hmm. finished length just to give you room for your permanent fold, yes. um, your hems, and mm -hmm. any kind of Wiggle room. Yeah, so and I actually try to um, we actually try to wrap the board with the same, like go all the way oh, over. Uh, if we're doing it. like a waterfall right. um, mm -hmm. shade, that way it gives us extra to um, to do that. Mm -hmm. And Sandy Scott said she's excited for the new method. I am too. And hello, Sandy. Well, thanks, time. guys. Mary Beth out there and Joni and me in. She said that uh, jumbo coated paper clips work great too. Oh, good idea. <laughs> Everyone loves that big ruler. <laughs> mm. Joey and we bring said you get a bucket of those clips at, at um, Amazon. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 
I, 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 we find lots of uses for them. And if we miss any questions yet, please type them in again here. We're just, um, Pam uh, Milton asked about the lining and I think we answered that. And Tammy Granger's out there and Lori Passmore and Tammy. Kathy Dillon, hello. And Amber, and I'm sorry if we've missed anybody saying hello. Just, oh yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. You, you're working with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next step. After you have, after you've tacked all of your intersections and you don't need to cut them, excuse me, I feel like my shirt is falling off. Um, <laughs> it is live, you know. Um, no wardrobe malfunctions going on. Uh, okay, so next. We don't want to make the nightly news. No, please we don't. don't no, want to go no we do we not. No, we do not. That's right. Take it off no, exactly. absolutely not. Get me banned from Facebook. That's right, absolutely not. Okay, so what I'm using next is um, the Do Fix Blackout Tape. You can buy them, buy it in the roll from, from Do Fix. I just switched cameras on you. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you had a question. No. So what I'm going to, the next, the next step is you're going to take the Blackout Tape and you're going to put it, you try hard to center it. It's not absolutely, you know, it's not a deal breaker not to, but it does help you. It's just kind of try to center it over your, your knots. And then so you cover up your, your threads, so you don't even have to worry about that with the blackout. Right. While you're ironing yes. that, the mm -hmm. question is, if I wanted to use inner lining, do I use Bellinote blackout lining with it? You don't need to, no. You could use inner lining and then whatever blackout you you like to use. Okay, so this, um, what you're using right now, that could be the inner lining layer. It, it, it is the, I'm, I'm counting it as an inner lining and a blackout. Okay. That is just saves a step from having an extra layer. Okay. And again, that's the like angel. It is. Okay. And then Jamie asked, are you going through to the face? And yes, Jamie. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jamie, I'm going all the way through to the face. I'm going to go the same procedure here. So now we're covering up those light holes. We're covering up the holes that I have put my, that we've made with the thread. Hi to Sarah from Cape Cod. Hi, Sarah. That's kind of my old neck of the woods. Yes, the tape is from Do Fix. It's yes, the blackout tape. Mm -hmm. um, here, here. It's twenty five twenty, I believe, is what the the number is. I, and, and another thing here is that I am using a boiler iron. Um, I know that the DoFix products, they, they, um, they, you do need a boiler iron. That doesn't mean you might not have been able to get, to get a good you know, seal with a um, traditional iron or, but, I, I don't want to take any chances, so I'm stuck. I just want to make sure it's a good, giving you a facial, right? There you go. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Bear with me one second. I need. I wanted to undo my. My irons got entangled. I can help you with that. Thank you. It makes it harder to work yep. with. You came here. Yep. There you go. All right. Thank you, Sandra. You're welcome. Okay. 
Next step. So we've got that. We've covered up our pinholes. You're not going to see them. Covered up your thread. You don't have to worry about what color it is. You don't even have to um, stop and cut it. And, and it will even help adhere, um, keep the knots in place. It's like glue. Love it. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you're going to cut those, that thread uh -uh. in the back. Mm -mm. So next, I'm going to come up and mark. I am going to mark from our from the original horizontal lines I have marked on the blackout. I'm going to measure up a quarter of an inch and I'm going to mark it again. Now you're going to you're, you're measuring up a quarter of an inch from where? From the original horizontal lines that I drew, okay, at where our ro our rows are. Okay. Or our, our rows. And where can I can I find a pencil? Okay. You need another pencil? I'm sorry. That's okay. I might have another pencil for you. <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> Do you measure up a quarter of an inch? Cheryl had a question. Is a reliable iron, is that compatible with do fix? Dude, I don't know. Is it is it a boiler iron? I mean is it does it have a base like a the boiler is separate. I believe so. I've had a reliable uh, boiler iron before. This is not a do-fix that I'm using. It's just a boiler iron. It's a high steam. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, she answered her question. Okay, sure, I'll answer her question. Okay. Okay, so you've marked this quarter. You know, you can just go up and do another eight, just like you've done the other one, because you'll have exactly another eight inches up. so far. I'm hoping you're liking it. So far anyway. Yep, I love it. Okay, so next we're going to use the do fix. It's called Rollafix. And Rollafix RH. It is a tape that has adhesive on the back just like the blackout tape does, but it has... I mean, see if you can hold that up so you can see what it looks like. It has um, like little uh, loops, if you can see that. Can you see how that works? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so what I do is I'm going to lay this. I'm going to... Um, I know this seems a, a little trivial, but... The particular, for some reason, this, the tape has a smaller, a smaller amount on one side of just tape past the um, loops and a larger. So I use the, the smaller one. You can tell I've been working. See? <laughs> um, I'm going to lay this roll of fix tape in line with the lot the second line I drew the one that's a quarter of an inch up that way you get a good you get a nice straight line and you, it it needs to be straight if it's not it won't pull up straight gotcha ask me how I know that <laughs> so this lesson where, learned this is where the precision really yes it in. does it is the other is not as precise but this is definitely mm -hmm. another thing that you need to be aware of is these loops that we're looking at, they need to be in line. One of the loops needs to be over your knot. And you can feel your knot or you can feel you know, where your threads are all the way through. It needs to be over it so it pulls up well, so it pulls up straight as well. If it's off, it's going to be kind of cockeyed when it comes up, okay. if that makes sense. Yes. And you could, if in doubt, you could go back and 
put that little, you can almost put a, 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 a put another a vertical line to match up to make your little cross if you if you want it. yes if you, you want it yes if you needed to do that you could but you're right you can feel that knot you can but if it, if that makes it easier for you sure okay um, so I'm going to start with and it's lined up the top is lined up and I'm just going to tack that first and I'm putting it over here onto the blue it holds it down it helps keep everything without without having to put another another layer of do fix under here to keep gotcha. everything straight you, know, you once we put the lining on it'll all be you won't see any of that um, now you're going to come over to your next and I'm feeling just where my knot is this one happens to line up well but if it doesn't it's okay to if you needed to scoot it over, make sure it's lined up. It's okay to snip that and then just layer them. I can show you, I can just show you how, to, how that works. This lined up well, sometimes they don't, just depending on where your, you know, where your columns are. So, let's see, I can show you that I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna snip it, then I'm just gonna layer it on top of each other. Any questions? Yeah, any questions right now? No, not really right now, but everyone is hopeful. <laughs> hopeful? <laughs> hopeful! <laughs> They're all excited and... Yeah. Okay. So, so this one actually seems good. to be lining up fairly well. It's probably just due to the spacing. The last one we did didn't line up as well, and that's how we decided we would cut those. Okay. And I think it's probably a, you know, a better idea to go ahead and run the whole length of that <laughs> rather than trying to band-aid it, do a band-aid yes. method. Is that yes, right? correct. Okay. And, um, and the reason, I, here's another, another um, caveat with this, is I thought about just doing um, small sections. Just little, you know, just little, just enough really to cover your, your blackout. But what happens with that is you get varying degrees of thickness when it's folded. And depending on the fabric, you could get more droop than you would in one section or not in another. It just doesn't pull up the same. It's, more con it's consistent when it goes all the way across, then it gives you the same thickness, if that makes sense. Yeah. I have found, too, when I've used the, uh, the do fix blackout mm -hmm. strip here that it really likes it when it's a long strip and you press it. Yes. I, I tried the little band-aid uh -huh. method and it didn't, it didn't like the little tabs. Uh -uh. I mean it's just not it's, I pref I think it you just get a better seal. Yep. Yeah. And that's the that's very important. Mm -hmm. Julia, did you, yes. are you um, lining up the top edge or the bottom edge of the tape with I the am I am lining up the top edge is it going? It's okay. There we go. That's better. The top edge of the tape with my top line. The second line I drew. Okay. The quarter inch. The quarter so inch. That the, so that the middle of the tape basically is on your first line. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that way you know where you're getting right over um, your knot. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you know about how big those loops are? Oh, uh, they are. Or how far apart they are too. But. Well, don't they? Like, They're about a half an inch. Don't they like oh. Oh, they, run right? Um, oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. I think so. Oh yeah, sure enough. Just to, I need to make sure that I'm hitting um, not quite on that one. So I'm going to move it over one section and put it where it's hitting right in the center. I'm 
come back and do that in a second. That one actually is hitting right. So. If somebody has the, uh, can get the link for the Do Fix website and drop it into um, the feed, that would be great. Um, did Catherine you, did she? Uh, did. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. thank you, Catherine. Yes, I think thank it was you. just www.dofix.com if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I did for um, yeah. Yeah. Com. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to snip that and overlap it again and adhere it down. All right, back to our same, same method again. Julie, there's someone yes. that just tuned in. She said she can't sleep and wants to know what you're doing. So if you want to briefly... Tell her as you're pressing. Oh, sure. Um, I am working on a um, blackout shade method with uh, roll of roll of do fix roll of fix. It's a way to avoid the pinholes of light in a shade. Oh, that one's lining up well. I don't know if that answered your question, Karen, but I hope so. And I think, uh, did Catherine ask the question, can you, about the ribs in here? Did oh, you? yes, I, she did, and I forgot to get back to and that. I, I forgot to. Um, so have you tried this method with ribs? I have not tried it with ribs. Um, I, I've... I kind of was working trying to find a method that I didn't need, didn't have to have the ribs, but that doesn't mean you couldn't use it. Right. And I think Rolly's, or Dofix has a product that, of that tape that they stick ribs in. Too. Yes, I they believe. do. So you they can do. use that Absolutely. the loops, I guess. Um, or, or whatever that product is. I'm not that familiar with it. Um, I, it. I don't know if you... I'm not as familiar with that, um, but that doesn't mean you couldn't put ribs in it. You could put the ribs in and, and adhere that down as well. That would be something to test. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Someone asked if you wanted to use ribs, would you glue them underneath the blackout lining? Um, I guess. I'm not sure, okay, if you wanted to use the ribs and you wanted to, I would, um, I would do inner lining and blackout if you wanted to glue your ribs. I would lay the inner lining down and glue your, your ribs to your inner lining, then put your blackout on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, if you do this, your, your ribs would be glued directly to the face fabric, which would not, wouldn't work. Right. Um, and if you glued the ribs on here, you may or may not see it through the lining. So that would probably be my recommendation. If you wanted to do ribs, would to be to do two layers, to do inner lining and then blackout. And someone says, how are your Anne is saying, how are your side hems finished off if you're only turned up under one and a half inches? And I'm thinking she's got to wait and see. You gotta wait and see. <laughs> it's a surprise. <laughs> We're not there yet. <laughs> it's a surprise. And then we've got some, somebody else has a question. And... Karen wants to know what ribs are because she's in the UK. So oh. ribs, I guess, like Karen, um, stiff. Um, like rods or mm -hmm. oh, Sandra's gonna find some for you. I don't have the official ones, but I have something that can give us a visual. I think. It helps. Um, the ribs are either fiberglass. I think most of them are fiberglass. Correct. Mm -hmm. Some people, I think, use um, maybe metal. metal. Yeah. So this is not one of the official ones, but you know, just gives you an idea of what you could use and how it goes across. It, it just helps the shade stay firm. firm. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
the folds stay a little nicer, I guess. Yeah, it keeps the shapes out taut. It does. Yeah. Did you have this tape on hand and said, let's see how it'll work? I was brainstorming. Uh, my staff and I, we were brainstorming, and I was trying to think of what we could use to accomplish this. And I knew that Dufix had this product. I just didn't know. I wasn't sure whether it would work for what I wanted. So I actually ordered... Um, they sent me just a little small sample because I didn't really want to purchase an entire roll if it right. was not going to work. Right. Um, so they were kind enough to send me just a little sample with another order I placed. And, um, and it, it, it did, what, did what I wanted it to do. Now I tried, here's something to tell you too, is I tried um, first, I tried it vertically. Mm. running it you know uh -huh. up the shade however when you sew the rings on it twists the rings because you can't go you have to go sideways right so that didn't work out <laughs> well, the demonstration purposes I'm not gonna I'm not going to stress about this too much. Sorry. Yes, Dufix has a rib tape with the loops on the top, same as the tape you are using now. It has Perfect. a pocket the ribs, it has a pocket the ribs slides into. Oh, great. Okay. okay. Well, that definitely, if you wanted to use ribs, that would be a great way to do it. And Jody said, I use fringe adhesive to adhere the ribs between the rings. I think it would work fine. Good. And Cheryl said, I learned from Scott Robbins today that he adds his ribs in between the lines. Just laying on top of the ring stitching. And then the opposite ribs are a thin fiberless rod. Yep. Um, hey, Bianca. <laughs> Karen, do you make a lot of shades too, or um, it, how do you all make yours? Sorry. Good idea. Okay, good, good question there. All right, and it's time to watch. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here's um, okay lining. So you're gonna take your lining, and I would use um, I'd use a a nice nice weight um like luster sateen, something like that's got a little bit more body to it. Um, if it's too thin, you can, you'll be able to see, you can see the, um, the tapes underneath. And that's a little thin, so you can see the tapes underneath. <laughs> oh, I can't see it. Okay, good. See? Now, I didn't know if you're up close, maybe you can, but from... Yeah, from not, yeah. Okay, and what I do with the lining is I cut it, I cut it two inches larger than the finished shape, the finished size of the shade. So this was like 24 inches, so I cut this 26 inches. Okay, I'm gonna lay this on. And you can cut out what you don't need down here, but just for right now, I kind of center that. I like that Rowan Dufix tape. 
um, stuff, but I really like the clean look of the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. Me too. Okay. So, at this point, you're going to go and mark where your um, rings are going to need to be. The fold lines were messing me up. It looked, it looked, I thought it was, a, I thought it was, it's like, I know the ribs are straight. I know my stuff is straighter than that. <laughs> um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold to the center in line with my rings. Or Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to line up the loop. That's going to be where your ring is going to, what you're going to attach your, your thread to. But you need to mark, I'm using a purple pen so it'll disappear, or you can get rid of it. I mean, mark where your rings need to be. And I'm going to do this one, and I'm going to do the center first and then work my way out. So I'm going to, and I'm using red thread just so you can, you'll be able to see what I'm doing and a curved needle. So what you're going to do is you're going to go through the lining. I'm going to see if I can show you what I'm doing this way. Where your mark is, where you've marked where your loop is. I'm going to go through the lining. for me to feel it and try to mm -hmm. show you. Okay, there you go. So I went through the lining and through the loop in the roll fix. And then I'm going to come back and then I'll do it a couple of times. Just, you know, try to make sure that you're not going all the way through your blackout. That's where the curved needle helps a lot. So if you haven't learned how to use a, uh, a, uh, a curved needle, you might as well start. <laughs> Now's the time. Now's the time to learn. There's so many methods of Roman shades, and so every time I do one, I think I stress over it, like, which method should I use yes. today? Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. There are. There are. And, you know, different methods are good for different applications. Mm -hmm. Right. Not every, you know, method, this may not work for, you know, every blackout method, or just may... Kim said that the upholsters love curved needles. <laughs> she struggles with that straight one. Yeah, I bet. I know. <laughs> I remember, Kim, when we took your class, you were, I had still, I was just learning how to use one and it, it, getting better, but it's still not great. I was uh -oh. not maybe that thanks was guys later. thanks <laughs> thanks sorry thanks for keeping me on tr on task <laughs> we were just enthralled watching you I didn't yes. want to get ahead of the game that's okay that's right we were okay. just like, certainly I was being patient you were being patient you know what we'll do you were not getting ahead of the game this yes you're going to go through here and then you're going to sew your ring on <laughs> sorry guys got ahead of myself of course I didn't do that right because I'm going in the other direction hold on there we go. I won't worry about going back and fix those, but yeah. just so you know that I was yeah. getting ahead of myself. So do it two or three times. Keep it, you know, and they're nice and tight. 
And how many strands are you using? This I'm just thing? using two, but you could use more if you wanted. Okay. It's that's personal preference, I think. It's not okay. doesn't have there's no set number. I know Karen, it's gonna be a um, a flat Roman. Julia showed it at the very beginning of the broadcast, and if we get a chance, we'll have her show it one more time for those of you who came in a little bit later. Or you can always go oh, back and watch the it. beginning. Yes, or I can actually, while well, she's sewing that on, mm -hmm. could you sure. just do the same? Of course. And I'll t turn it around and I'll show the shade. How about that? So while you're doing that. Absolutely. And so you can see here um, is the shade. And this is a Coley system. I don't know what system you all have over in the UK, Karen. And but this is new, and you just pump it, and it goes down. And you can see, you know, Julia right now is sewing the rings on. And we um, have our safety standards, so we use the ring locks over the rings. But you can see just how nice this back is. And as you, as you pull it back up, of course, you know, we have to train them. You went ahead and pulled it up to train mm -hmm. them. Yep. It doesn't have any ribs in it. I've got a lot in here. Um, but it just pulls up nicely. And there's a stopper on here, so I probably... It'll go aboard. Okay. I've got to go ahead and drop that down. Okay. Um, give it a nice long pull, I think, is what I need to do. I still have a stop on there. But... That's okay. It will go up. You just set the little stops on it. Do you want to show where the front? I will. Or she may not be able to see the folds. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep. And then you can see the folds. I thought we had this up higher. Operator error. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if you can see the folds. Do you, I, this is a new system for me, so I'm not really sure how to uh, set the stop. But was it up higher than this? Yeah, it should go higher. Now, now pull the other cord. Oh, you got it. You're pulling up. Okay, okay. there you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I pulled the wrong. So there you go. So there's the folds. And I what I think I really like too is that um, that Bella Note duet. Is that mm -hmm. what you said? Is yeah. That there? Mm -hmm. It really um, makes this uh, shade have a nice hand to it. Mm -hmm. So I think that will make a big difference too. So yeah. What do you all think so far? I'm really liking this. Thanks, Julia. Again, and again. Oh, thank you. I mean, I'm so excited to show it. And again, uh, we've got Jill Reagan Scully, if you're still out there. Uh, she's got a link to um, how you can get more information about the Coley's Headwell system. We, we said we weren't focusing on that, but since it's here, just to let you know, uh, it's something new out in, the, uh, in our industry. And there's also um, uh, Nicole Nomer. It, I put her information in. The, uh, the uh, in the beginning of the feed for tonight too so you have two options to reach out to these ladies and get more information on this system yeah thanks sandra yeah you're welcome okay so i've got the ring sewn on the center and then i folded that this side and marked it just like i did the center mm -hmm. and on each side so i will go so ahead and work from the middle out work for the middle out mm-hmm it seems to stay in place better. I mean, it doesn't seem to shift as much if you work, if you do it that way. Mm -hmm. Ring this time. So could you attach the rings after sewing the lining to the loop by just cutting the thread and knotting it to the ring? I'm not sure I understand the, the question. I'm not sure I do either. I think I do. But. <laughs> What was it? Read it again. Um, Cheryl's asking, could you attach the rings after sewing the lining to the loop by just cutting the thread and knotting it to the ring? Maybe she's saying... Just pull it and then just knot it? I mean, yeah. not go through a couple times? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying sure. Job. Maybe she means like sewing the lining like you did the without black out the bellinote and with the long threads and mm -hmm. then going back and cutting them and then tying the ring on well that i mean that's kind of what i'm doing i'm just i'm just going through a couple of times just to um make sure that the it's good and tight 
especially the bottom one, you know, the one that's going to hold most of the weight. But I'll, I mean, I'll show you what I just, because I'm not sure you saw me, saw what I just did, because Sandra was, yeah, okay, hold on a second. So I do keep this, do keep the string. Deborah Cronus says she loves that you're using the twin pull. Uh huh. <laughs> and I really like that. And Kimberly said that uh, she's not a fan of having ribs and stiff stuff inside her shades, but she loves this method. And Aggie's loving the method and will be anxious today to, to try this, maybe, Lori said. And Jody said, I need to try the Bellinotti. Yeah, I'm going to try it too, Jody. I, I really like that hand, it really feels good to me. And Claire, and she loves this. Thanks for showing it. She's got a bunch of do fix tape that she hasn't used yet. And Karen said that's really good. I didn't think you would get such a good fold. Yeah, you do. It really looks good, Karen. We do are getting a really good, uh, nice fold. Yes, I mean that was that was another thing when I started testing. I was like, okay, are we going to have a nice fold? Is it going to you know is it going to be too? I, I will. Okay, I'll give you another another thing we were trying first was. I tried the Dufix Iron-On Blackout, thinking, okay, that'll be, you know, we do that, do a similar method, which you could still do, but once the once the blackout is adhered to the fabric, it um, becomes extremely stiff, mm -hmm. and I just did not like how it looked. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great for certain applications, but for what the, for what I wanted for this, it just didn't it just didn't work. What's the largest shade you've made so far? Uh, with this, mm -hmm. uh, we just did um, a 55 inch by 135 inches. Wow, wow. awesome. Very long. That is long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of rings. Mm -hmm. Julie, let me ask you this too. Uh, I know you're starting from the inside and moving your way out on each side, mm -hmm. but if you're using, doing a shade that large, since you've already marked Everything else seems to be very precise mm -hmm. that you have you have marked here. You know, mm -hmm. so so could you rather than you know pulling this back, which is not a bad thing, but do you think that you could take your long ruler and just go along here? You, and you might could, yeah. And that way, this lays flat, and mm -hmm. then you just come in and you can probably almost feel it. And I don't mm -hmm. think it's good that it goes through that little loop. Um, well, it has to go through the loop. It has to go through. It the loop. has to go. Th what the loop provides is you sew in your your ring. Okay. That's what pulls it. Right. So the the ring has to go through the loop. Okay. Because that's what's going to fold it. Pull it up. Pull yeah, it up. That's your thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did but I, I think that you, yes, that you did. Sorry. Yes, you did. But if the, but and you've you've got it nice and precise. But I think if you've already have it all measured out and you just go back and measure it, that as long as it's it's really the ring too. But I understand the loop too. But I didn't know if you had to fold it back or if you. Could. Well, you. I guess you wouldn't. You could. You could maybe pre-mark it. Right. Um, no. I'm just not sure that it would be that much faster. But, okay. But I guess you could. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, it's the ring that's going to pull that shape. It's the ring through the loop in the, the okay. roll fix that's actually pulling, because it's adhering to the knot that you have, that you've mm -hmm. sewn all the way through to the face. Right. So all of that becomes adhered together, and once it's sewn to the loop, then it's... Um, mm -hmm. So, I don't... Um, this is... What I would do is go in and just knot them off. Mm -hmm. And then I'd go back and put a little dot of French adhesive or glue or something just to keep them from, you know, no chance of coming apart. Are we past our time? Yes, we are. We, we are. Talking, so, okay. Yes. I'm so it's sorry. It's okay. Uh, let me just do one more real quick thing. Yeah, that's all right. We were letting you. Um, you should have told me I was going.
That's okay. I was going to let you finish that row. Okay. Catherine said, do you use a lot of do fix plots? Because she never has, but thinks it would be great in certain I I don't use a tremendous amount, no. Mm -hmm. But when it, when it works, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, so here's what I do on the sides, just to give you a real quick, because I know it's time and we are past. Um, I fold it under. Give myself a little, you know, pretty little half inch or so. Here you go, Ann. Here you go, Ann. This is how we finish it off. <laughs> Are you still there, Ann? You should probably cut just probably like, oh my gosh, she took forever. <laughs> so I press that down. I would use do fix or roll or glue or whatever you want to put underneath there to keep it from coming up. Mm -hmm. The bottom, you just fold up like you were doing a regular. I use do fix. You could hand sew it to the back lining. Don't go all the way through to create. And then I use this for my rod pocket. Over. I would hand sew. I would put the rod, the rod, my threaded rod or your weight bar in the bottom and then hand stitch the sides closed. There you go. That's it. Oh, voila. Nice. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Thanks for uh, staying with me and bearing through a long presentation. No, no, it's great. I'm going to come around here. Do this on that in front of the camera. And uh, scooch back around. But this is great. This is, I, I am like loving this method too. I'll pull this over here. Can I be the camera lady? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it, and I hope that all of you are too. You can see uh, Deborah Cronin said there is a new cotton flannel. Um, that's it went so quick I couldn't read it. I know I couldn't see what that. I says. can't see the whole. Okay, hang on. Uh, Melanote Centurion, I think, but I can't see the rest of the message. Let me see if I can scroll way down here. Uh, yeah, there is a new cotton flannel back blackout option in addition to the Bellanote duet called Bellanote. Citron, which is a more drapery than oh okay, oh, okay. more drapes to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good, good. idea. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. awesome. And everyone's thanking you and thanking you. And well, it's, thank you guys it's for great. watching. And I hope that we haven't missed any um, of your questions. If we have, uh, type them in, and then yes, please later, do. Absolutely, you know, reach out. Um, Absolutely, Bravo, got a lot of good things. And thank you all for being here. Um, Yes, we will post this. It will be it will be here um, on the feed, so you can definitely watch the replay. It'll be here, um, and I'm going to try to go ahead with your permission, put it out there on Absolutely. the YouTube channel too. Of course, because sometimes it's easier to read, mm -hmm. get out there on YouTube, and find it. Bam, you're done. True. Um, but thank you, and, and y'all, um, I'm still on a little bit of a um, a little bit of a <laughs> a hiatus. But again, like I thank said, thank you, Amy. <laughs> I will be back. I will be back. Uh, Life of Sandra B will be back on a regular schedule, probably maybe in November. Um, we've got a couple of things that we're going to do um, the rest of this month. Uh, so yeah, and uh, we again, I'm thinking about maybe doing Life of Sandra B once a month as opposed to every week, and maybe doing doing it during the daytime, maybe a lunch hour. So you guys give me your feedback. <laughs> Thank you, Angie. <laughs> give me your feedback on that. I've had some really great feedback, and people said, Sandra, do it during the day. Um, give us an hour. We can watch while we work, and, uh, you know, we'll we'll do it, like I said, um, daytime hour, once, mm -hmm. a, once a month. Okay. That sounds great. Give me a chance to do everything else I need to do. But anyway, real, real quick before you go, uh, we promised that we would tell oh, you mm -hmm. about another project that right. Julia is working on. As well uh, as Kathy Cuttington. Yes. And a lot of you know, and you know Julia now, and a lot of you already know Kathy Cuttington. And they have this, what do you, would you call it, a management system? What is it called? It is a uh, project management, database management um, application that we've, we are using to help our workrooms. There's some wonderful new products coming out as well, but um, we love this just because it can be geared to 
anything personal, professional, anything like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's called Airtable. I know yep. if anybody's heard of it, but she was teaching me that day she yep. told me about mm -hmm. this. And if you, anybody has signed up for the Artisan Project or the Pillar Project, um, that's, what you're, that's what you're going into. And it's mm -hmm. a great database. It makes our life easier. Oh, so and, much easier. Yeah. So much easier. So Julia mm -hmm. and Kathy are going to be teaching it in Work From Central at the IWCE in March. And the IWCE is going to be March 25th through the 27th in Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, I am I'm proud to say that my husband and I are the directors and the coordinators for all of it. And um, we're real excited about it. And we're going to have such a good time. We've got a great team of Looking uh, forward to it. people coming mm -hmm. on and helping me and people like you teaching. And so we're real excited about that. And so I hope all of you will mark your calendars and join us because um, she probably... You're thinking about reteaching this, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and as well as giving that mm -hmm. presentation. Plus, we have a whole lot more coming up. So, anyway, thank you, everybody. It's great having you here. It's kind of great being back too. Yeah, it's fun. Thank you, yeah. Sandra. Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, oh, about, about the eight-inch ruler. I'm working on that. I promise. I will. I will let you know as soon as it's ready. <laughs> okay, everyone. Have a great night, and I will let you know the next time we're going to go live. Have a great one. Thank you.